For most people, when they start playing disc golf, they usually start out with discs that they borrowed from their friends or maybe discs that they found, and eventually they come to the point where they want to buy their own discs. Well, when you're buying your own discs, arguably the most important disc is the putter. So this is how to choose your first putter. For everybody, when choosing a putter, the most important thing is how the disc feels in your hand. And there's a number of things that can change how it feels. Arguably the most important is a bead. A bead is a small ridge of plastic on the bottom of the disc that some people use as like a point of reference for their grip so they know that they're gripping the disc the same every time. An example of a putter with a bead is a Dynamic Discs Judge here. And you can see it's got quite a big ridge of, along the bottom of it. And lots of people like the feel of that because they feel like they can grip it more consistently. Conversely, a putter without a bead is the Dynamic Discs Warden here. This putter just, just is rounded off on the bottom. It doesn't have that extra plastic. And people might choose a beadless putter because they, they like the clean release that it gives and they feel like they can't get that on a putter with a bead. In the end, it really doesn't affect the flight all that much. The bead generally helps the disc maintain its stability a little bit longer, but in a putting putter, you really don't need to worry too much about the stability of your disc as long as it, as it flies consistently for you and you can get a clean release out of it. The other thing that greatly affects the feel of a putter is the plastic. At Dynamic Discs, we have four blends of plastic that are like our putter plastics. These are generally the more baseline plastics, and they're a little bit more affordable because discs in, the, in these plastics tend to wear out just a little bit quicker than discs in a more premium plastic. You're gonna wanna choose a, a base plastic for your putter over a more premium plastic because the more premium plastics are generally fairly slick, and it's not going to be as consistent of a release when you're trying to be very touchy around the basket. When you're trying to throw a putter, if you were trying to drive with a putter, then those premium plastics are gonna be a little bit more ideal because they're gonna be more durable. And that little bit of variance in the grip isn't going to affect you as much on a full power shot as opposed to a putt. So for the firmness of the plastic in your putter, at Dynamic Discs, we have these four plastics here. And from firmest to softest, we have the classic plastic, the prime plastic, and classic blend, and a classic soft plastic. So my deputy here is in the classic plastic, and you can see when I push down around the edges, it doesn't really flex much at all. There is a little bit there, and the putter is still very grippy, but it, it does not flex down nearly as much as the opposite side of the spectrum is this classic soft Marshall here. You see, when I put about the same pressure on this Marshall, it almost folds. It, it flexes down quite a bit around the outside, and this is much more grippy, I think, than the classic plastic. So what I tend to gravitate towards is the blend plastic, like I have on my classic blend guard here. If I push down around the edges, you see it flexes down a little bit. This is about the same pressure as I put on the other two, but it doesn't really, it, it doesn't really flex down nearly as much as the soft plastic. And then the prime plastic is, our, is even more affordable than the classic plastic. And, and so this plastic will tend to season a little bit quicker. It'll tend to get more dings and more nicks around the outside but this plastic is right in between the classic and the blend plastic for firmness. So the third thing that really affects how a putter feels is the depth. This classic deputy here is fairly shallow, so when I grab it, my fingers are towards the middle, and I feel like I use a lot more fingers when I putt with a deputy, and I can get a lot more power coming from my fingers on a shallower putter like the deputy. By contrast, a guard has a fairly deep edge here. And the guard, that means my fingers are gonna be a little bit more close to the edge. And so I tend to use a little bit more wrist and a little bit more arm when I'm putting with the guard as opposed to the deputy. The biggest beginner mistake that I see when they're choosing a putter is they focus too much on how the putter flies. The deputy here is an understable putter, which means if I were to throw this putter off the tee, it's gonna probably have a good bit of turn and it's gonna finish towards the right. Whereas this Marshall here is an overstable putter. If I were to throw this off the tee, it's probably gonna hold its angle and it's gonna fade towards the left. That doesn't really translate much to on the putting green. If you're inside about 10 meters from the basket, they're probably going to fly roughly the same. You see here I'm putting with several different discs and, they, and there are varying stabilities and they all fly roughly the same straight towards the basket. When you get farther out, when you get to maybe 12 or, or 15 meters away, that's when you're gonna to start to see some variance. See, here's a jump putt with the deputy where I can throw it just straight at the basket and trust that it's not gonna fade out. Whereas the marshal here, I have to kind of aim a little bit higher and right and let that fade carry it into the basket. Now that being said, going with something extremely understable or extremely overstable as your putting putter 
can reduce your consistency. This is a prime gavel. This is the most understable putter that Dynamic Discs makes, and I definitely did have to be a little bit more careful with how I threw this one inside the circle, whereas all of the others I could just throw straight at the basket. And then this is a prime slammer. This is a very overstable. I almost consider this more of an approach disc than a putter. While you can putt with it, it is going to fly significantly different than all of our other putters inside the circle. Now that being said, if you play in a very windy area, it's possible that you might want to have something very overstable in your bag, like a slammer, for putts when you have a big headwind because the slammer in a big headwind will putt roughly similar to like a judge or a marshal in no wind. So if you would rather than compensate for the wind with your putt, if you just want to throw the same putt and get the same result when you have a headwind, you might want to have a slammer in there just in case. But for most of your putting, you're going to want to stick to a, a normal stability of putter, something that's fairly neutral to slightly overstable or slightly understable. The most commonly overlooked thing I see when beginners are selecting their putter is the weight. When you're choosing a putter for around the circle or when you're trying to make the putt, you're going to want to stick pretty close to max weight. Max weight for putters is usually around 174 to 176 grams, and every putter in that weight range is going to fly the same from putter to putter. If you tend to get a little bit lighter, if you get uh, when I use like a 170 gram putter, that's going to be for farther away putts where I'm trying to throw them the same but get a little bit of extra glide, a little bit of extra distance. If I use those lighter putters inside the circle, I tend to miss high and I'll hit the band a lot of times. So once you've chosen your putter, it's a good idea to pick up several, not only so you can have a backup in case you lose your putter, but also for practice putting. If you can have the same putter every time when you're practice putting, that consistency is going to translate over to on the course. That being said, if you're in a putting slump, it can be helpful to change your putter. I putted with judges for a, for a while, about a year, because I liked the, the overstable flight and that finish at the end, but then I switched to something straighter like a warden when I started struggling with the judges. And I like the straight flight and how I don't have to throw it nearly as hard and I still glide to the basket. So if you're having struggles putting, I would recommend switching it up a little bit and try seeing if a new putter gives you a little bit of extra confidence. So after all that, it's time to choose a putter. Now it's important to know that choosing a putter is a very personal thing. Zach Melton and Paige Bierkes putt really well with the judge, but I personally don't like the feel of the bead or the overstable finish, so I'm going to throw a warden. Some people like a softer plastic, some people like a harder plastic. It's important to find what works for you and stick to that. If you're looking for a good place to start, I would re recommend picking up a judge, a warden, or a deputy. The judge is going to give you the feel for that overstable beaded putter. The warden is going to give you a very straight flight and a beadless feel. And the deputy is going to give you that understable extra glide flight with kind of a, a micro bead on the bottom. That's what it's called when there's not a full bead, but there's definitely not just a smooth, smooth finish around the bottom. And then if you're looking for something a little more overstable, you can try a marshal or a little bit more glide, you can try a guard. Really, you can't go wrong with any of these, so it's all about finding what you like and what works for your game and your style of putt. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something about how to pick out a putter, and I hope you find something that works well for you. Remember to subscribe and ring that bell for Dynamic Discs so you know when we're coming out with new content. And if you're looking for a place to start for instructional content and how to improve, I would definitely recommend checking out Physics of Flight. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.